Hello everyone. This evening I want to share with you some projects using the Corner Bouquet stamp set. And this is one that is a celebration gift. Oh, you can't see that. Celebration. So it is a freebie with your purchase. And I want to show you some ideas with that. And this one's just available through January and February. So I'll turn you around and we'll get started. This is the stamp set that we're using. Sorry, this one here, the Corner Bouquet. It's a nice solid one, which does lend itself to some various um, fun techniques. And I'm also going to bring in the Heal Your Heart, just because this one doesn't have any words with it, as you can see. So um, I thought these would be some nice words to pair it with and this one's also a celebration gift so both of these you can get for free with your order during january or february so this is the project that i want to share with you first and show you some techniques on this one and then i have some other things to show you at the end of the video so i like to do square cards and this this particular image really lends itself to square cards, although you certainly can do it with your standard size, but um, it tends, it's about a, a square, um, it fits nicely as a square as well. So I'm using a five by 10 um, card base, and this is using the thick basic white. And then I'm also using the ombre papers. So this, these are the, also a celebration, celebration gift and you have ones that have polka dots and one that are just solid but you see that they're already that ombre look and you have rich razzleberry or it might be blackberry bliss i think it's rich razzleberry and rococo rose and then on the other side you have the granny apple green and the bermuda bay so i've used the granny apple green as you can see and so hopefully you can see that in the video that it is an ombre so it didn't have to sponge it or anything it just is already printed like that. And then I have embossed it with the Pinewood Planks folder. I believe you can see that in the video. And it just gives it some nice texture. This is one of my most used embossing folders. Always the embossing folders that are uh, very nature-like, they're always really useful because they kind of go with everything. And then I'm just matting that onto a piece of, of thick basic white. So I apologize, this is four and three eighths by four and three eighths, and then the white is four and a half by four and a half. Okay, and, and then next we're going to use this nice paper, uh, I can't even say it's paper, it's acetate. It is actually from the hydrangea suite, and it comes in a 12 by 12, and it's Highland Heather on one side and silver on the other. And then there is one that's more of a pink shade. Um, and I uh, just want to remind everybody that when you buy this, you will want to peel the protective layer off the back, off the silver side, because it will be very difficult to cut and very difficult to die cut. Well, I couldn't, I, I won't say impossible, but it's a lot more difficult than it needs to be if you forget to take that layer off. Then I'm just going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the middle of this. Now, normally you'd need to be quite careful where you put adhesive, but because we're going to cover it with our stamped image, it doesn't matter. I just put use whatever you want to use, and I'm just going to line that up so it's going to be even from side to side. So this is five inches, same as our card, and then this is about one and three quarter inches. Okay, I'll set that aside. And then we'll do our ribbon. So this is the gorgeous grape ribbon that's in the new mini catalog. And I believe this is also in the hydrangea suite. And I've just cut a piece that's about six or seven inches. And I'm going to wrap that around. I'm not generally a believer in wrapping ribbon around your whole card and then trying to tie a bow. Um, we do occasionally, but not generally. So it does look kind of funny at the moment, but um, it's going to come right here in a minute, and then we will just go ahead and put that onto our card front. And you can use tape or glue and put that on. And just make sure that these edges are lined up as you would want them. And now let's do our stamping portion. So I'm going to grab a little piece of grid paper and the stamp. 
So I'm going to show you, um, after we've made this card, some different ways to use these solid stamps and get the multicolors. But here's one way that I think you're really going to like this. So even though this paper is Granny Apple Green, I'm going to use the Pear Pizzazz ink. At least when I was trying it, the Granny Apple Green was a little bit too um, yellow and too bright compared to the paper. So I found the, the uh, Pear Pizzazz was actually a better match. But it might just kind of depend on how wet your ink pads are. So I'm going to ink that up, and I'm actually going to stamp it off and then stamp it onto my paper. And um, you will wanna stamp, uh, sorry, I should tell you this paper is three and a quarter by three and a quarter and it just fits this stamp, okay? And then in this set, there's also just a little single flower. Now you may have discovered, I'm sure it's not just me that if you have really small stamps and there's a bit of rubber around them, that sometimes that extra rubber catches ink. So I took my scissors and trimmed that extra, I mean, yeah, trim that extra rubber off. But what the tip I want to give you tonight, though, is, if I can pull it off, make sure you don't trim that gray part as well. Leave all the foam that you can on and just trim the red rubber. Otherwise, your stamp becomes quite unstable. Um, you're not likely to get ink on the foam bit. If you are, then you're pressing way too hard. Um, but you wanna keep as much of a foundation as you can. So hopefully that helps. So basically the concept of doing the stamping this way is you wanna have a very dark color for your flowers and a relatively light color for your leaves. And we're just gonna stamp over the top like this. And that way, it's very quick and easy, and you can add extra flowers in to your greenery here. And this big flower, I'm just gonna stamp a few times like this. There we go, I think that's about right. Might add just one more down there. So that's a really um, quick way to do this stamp and get the multicolored image. Now I'm gonna use Highland Heather next, and this is like the daughter of Gorgeous Grape. It's a bit lighter purple, but it is um, like the same purple, but lighter. And I'm just using a little splatter stamp. This one is from, this one's from Waterfront. However, you know what? I think if you had a look through your stamps, you'll probably find that you have a, something like this. Uh, they're very common because um, they're so useful. And what I'm still going to stamp it off so that I get a very light purple and just add some little dots in through here. Not too many, something like that. So hopefully you can see that. It just adds just that, it just fills in the white space a bit. And then we'll grab our words from the, um, I've forgotten the name. The Heal Your Heart stamp set. We'll use the Wishing I Could Heal Your Heart. Hopefully that's mounted straight. But this is great where you can just check it on your grid paper and it is a little crooked. So my youngest daughter spends more money than she earns. And so yesterday I had her mount all of my stamps, but that means some of the stickers just might not be totally perfect, but that's okay. I feel it's important that they earn they're spending money that I don't just give it to them. Okay, so, and on the sample, you can say I use the we're in this together. So both of those are in that set. And then I'm just gonna mount it to another piece of white. Um, so this was three and a quarter square. So this would be three and three eighths square. And I apologize if you don't think in inches. I've never learned to think in centimeters. And then this can just go onto our card front and we'll put that on with dimensionals. Okay, so we'll put that on about in the middle. I think square cards, um, I don't normally like to have things all symmetrical and in the middle, but I think square cards, uh, sometimes it's what you need to have. So, and then I've taken another piece of ribbon and I've probably gotten too much here, but generally speaking, you need about 12 inches to make a bow. 
I'm just going to slip that underneath here and tie a bow. And this is the thing that when people come to my classes, they hate that I almost always have them tie a bow, but they're getting pretty good at it. Um, always optional. But these really soft, these sheer ribbons are actually quite easy to tie. And always hang on to the knot as you adjust it, otherwise it will just keep loosening and you'll keep tightening and then loosening and then tightening and then loosening. So something like that. And then everybody needs to have a pair of ribbon scissors. They don't have to be giant um, sewing scissors like these ones, but you could just have two pairs of Stampin' Up! scissors and one of them be for your paper and one of them be for your ribbon so that they always cut really nicely. And then I want to embellish using these, and these little beauties are from the Sand and Sea Suite. So I'm using actually quite a few different suites here. And it's very hard to describe these other than that they're like opals. I think you can see them actually pretty well. They're, they're just cool, so I really like them. Uh, and we'll just place those in here. You can place them in and amongst the flowers, or you can do some flowers and some up by the words like I've done here. Um, on the inside, I've used that stamp, but instead of using it as a corner, I've actually used it flat like, like this, and then did the same thing with the purple flowers and the little dots and stuff. So you can use it also as a border. It doesn't have to always be this particular shape. Okay, so going on to this one, I'm actually going to grab a few things. I'm going to use my, or I would use my markers, and maybe I'll just do a portion of it. But to get the multicolors like this one, you would use your markers. So I would just color directly onto the rubber all the greenery pieces. I'll just do this little portion just, for, just to not bore you. And then you would color your flowers individually with whatever color you want to use your flower or you want your flowers to be and I'm used bumblebee and cherry cobbler there we go and then I have a spritzer with water now you could just stamp it like that but I did find it actually looked that little bit better if I just spritzed it with water just once I might have been a little bit generous there and then you just would stamp it down there you go and so you'd see how you would get, if you did the whole thing, you would get that beautiful multicolored image. So it's not hard, and probably you have markers, but I will remind you that this does not work with Stampin' Blends or the alcohol markers, the, the big markers. It only works with water-based markers. And I do have a whole video explaining how all of that works um, that I will put a link to on this video when I edit it. And then this up here, these are the field and flower papers that I use, or flower and field papers that I used last, in last week's Facebook Live. And I pulled this out because this print actually really coordinates quite well with the images in this stamp set. But I personally felt like it was too, it was, didn't look right to me to have flowers in the corner and then flowers up in the air. So I, I actually didn't use that other side of that one, but I used the other side of a different one to pick up the red in those flowers. And then again, used that Heal Your Heart stamp set here. Okay, we'll put that one over here. Then this one is one that I didn't, well, I did do it, but it was brought to me by one, uh, one of the ladies on my team. We did a little class where everyone brought a project and shared, and she used the smaller corner bouquet in this set, and we did it one side and then flipped the paper over and did it the other side. And then die cut right out of the middle and flipped it around. So they still matched, but you've got the light to dark and then light to dark going that way using these same ombre papers that I've used in this one that I just did with you now. Let's see, I'll put them like this. Okay, and then this is another one that, I, that um, someone else on my team made as a swap, but it's using those same coloring right on the stamp and stamping it. So you've got all those beautiful multicolored image, a beautiful multicolored image. She's even used some different greens in there. And then just a simple label with um, some words up in the corner. So it's quite, quite simple, but very effective and adding some little pearls in there too. And then this is another one I did this afternoon, which I was quite happy with how this one worked out. 
And this one I wanted to make obviously as a sympathy card. So you don't have to make your image multicolored. I have just used the blending brush and the gray granite and just blended the color up from the bottom up through the top. And it took probably five or six or seven layers to get that depth of color down here at the bottom, just blending, blending, blending. And then I just stamped in the corner also with gray granite and then use that single flower here and the same words. And to get ribbon to match, I've used the Whisper White Seam Binding. And all you need to do for that is use your Stampin' Blends. So I've got the dark and the light gray granite. So what I did was I used the dark gray granite. Hopefully you can see that, it looks kind of light. And just put some color on there. And then I use the light one go over top. So you still get like a little bit of a variation of light and dark, even within the ribbon. And by using your Stampin' Blends and this Whisper White seam binding ribbon, you can make ribbon of any color that you like. Well, hopefully you can kind of see the difference between the white and the gray granite there. Anyway, so I've, I've just done that up there in the corner. So this is a way that you can use the stamp without doing any coloring or any um, real technique, but just having a nice uh, subtle image, I suppose, and using just one color of ink pad. So if you would like this stamp set, all you need to do is place an order during January or February that qualifies. And in New Zealand, it's $110. And then you can pick this set or uh, from a number of other gifts for free. And um, you can shop at stamphappy.co.nz forward slash shop. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you for your, all your comments and support. And I really appreciate you. And have a good rest of your evening. Bye-bye.